controller in Apex Legends has a problem. I'm, I'm switching. Now this might sound faded, but I genuinely believe that good controller players do not need aim assist. Now as wild as that statement is, I have a reason to believe this because a while back, while editing my AOC video, which by the way, it's one of my best performing videos on this channel, so thank you for that. While watching it back, one thing popped up in my head. Is that me doing the tracking? Hold on. Yeah. That's me. Right? 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 I started to doubt whether that was me or the machine. While I was staring at my monitor, I had a great idea to prove myself that I wasn't going mad and that it was in fact me doing it. What would happen if Respawn decided to permanently turn aim assist off? Well, I decided to start a challenge for one week only where I will play Apex with my aim assist off and see if I can adapt to this hypothetical scenario. So I turn off my aim assist, I read it up for pubs, feeling like Michael Scott standing at the top of the Dunder Mifflin rooftop. And so I did. Oh, I knew it! You controller players and your tiny little thumbs cannot even get a kill without a- Day one was a little rough, as expected. Getting used to playing without aim assist on the first day is something that's not realistic at all. And I knew that I could get better. But the question is, where do I start? I was extremely humbled on day one. The truth is, it sparked some drive in me and some curiosity. So I asked myself if a normal player like me could survive without aim assist for a week. And I was determined to figure it out. I developed some drills in the firing range, set some goals for myself, and reached out to people so I can get more educated in the subject of aim assist. I went from struggling to survive more than one team to getting consistent in-game and getting more confident without aim assist. And here's how I did it. Okay, so in Season 17 of Apex Legends, we got this brand new firing range that makes it possible for anyone to start developing a warm-up routine. Now, instead of just shooting bots with no purpose, I'm gonna start running some drills that are gonna help me in-game. Now, the first thing is tracking. While having the dummies move at all times at random strafes, I'm gonna start moving around the map, and the goal is to hit clean one clips to the dummies consistently. I tune my ALCs as close as possible to 4-3 linear no dead zone, which is what I play. So here we go. Okay, so he's taking me like at least like two or three mags to kill the bot. And uh, yeah, we gotta work on that. The next drill is to practice long range shooting. I'm gonna grab an R301 or a flatline and shoot from a distance. And no, no nemesis allowed because that would be cheating. For this challenge at least. Wait, the filing without aim is just kind of slaps low-key. Now, for the next one, it might hurt my ego, but I gotta practice with single-fired guns. I gotta pick up a wingman and a PK and practice with them. Right. Holy shit. Wow. Oh my god. So safe to say, day one was rough. I wasn't one clipping anymore, and my PK and wingman were below average. That's just the reality. However, I knew that all I need to do was practice. And by day two, my one clips were getting better. Shockingly better, I'll say. Ooh. Is it off? It is. Yes, I did see improvements with my tracking, but I wasn't 100% happy with where I was at. God damn it. I feel like spray guns can be really good for me. Guns like the R3 or the car could work really well here. Single tap guns, however, bleh, that's where my weakness is. My wingman with linear is like pretty good, but without aim assist. It's not my strength yet. 
Flicking is a lot harder, I noticed. My PK with aim assist is pretty decent, but without aim assist, it's kind of like, eh. So I'll work on those things a lot more. Now, what I want with this challenge is this. I want my tracking with SMGs to be a lot more consistent without aim assist. My mid to long range shooting should be a lot better. And of course, I just want to be overall consistent. I want to get a win, but I gotta get in as many fights as possible. Keep doing this for a week and get comfortable playing without aim assist. I ran these drills before every pub match I went in. And after day three, I felt more confident. I jumped into some pubs and here's how I went. Whoa! Dude, I got Nemi. Oh my god, I always pay the price for not being a nerd. One thing was lingering in my mind. That little voice in my head was telling me that this was just a waste of time. Like with all things, they get a little difficult. But all you really have to do, it's curve stomp the little voice. Once I get it to shut up, I just remind myself that the reason I do these challenges, it's because I enjoy the difficult things that I don't typically see. And if I just get over that speed bump, I'll be good to go. Putting my frustration aside, I realized that the secret to get better was to learn from the best. And that's exactly what I did. I reached out to top controller players in seek of answers about aim assist. And the people I got the pleasure to talk to were the Gibby King himself, the Kine, the Horizon Demon, Flintzar, and last but definitely not least, Brother Enoch. Did you start in console? Yeah, I started on, it was on Xbox until season two. And then I switched to PC when uh, like halfway through that season when ranked was out and all that stuff. So when you switched from console to PC or, you know, 0.6 to 0.4, did you feel like nerfed in any way or no when you switch from like console to pc if you're like a talented player you're able to make better plays because you have less input lag more frames the combination of everything being so much smoother and better uh, especially once i was at the level where i could actually recognize it i didn't i didn't think of like in any way as being like a, a big nerf and how long did it take you to adjust well i hit credit in a week so Oh my, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Pred was only a thousand RP. So the system was slightly different, but a lot of people, like even bigger streamers at the time on PC thought I was cheating because I, I hit Pred and I was like level 60 or 70 or something like that. So I actually just looked like one of those cheater accounts. So one of the biggest misconceptions about Amos is that it pretty much aims for you, that it's easy. We put it all at this point. And you being a high level controller player, can you explain with your own words how much of you is involved with using the controller? See, like the th everybody thinks like controllers like super op and like it's definitely strong but in order to become like one of the best controller players like top rank top comp level it involves an immense amount of skill like just ability because like if it, if it was so easy everybody would be doing it and that's just not the case to say it aims for you is it's not true it's like it's all like slow down right it's not like doing crazy things but there is like there's stuff that you can implement into your play style that makes it feel easier like if you're to exactly like mirror somebody's strafe you don't have to move your right stick and you're just going to one clip everybody but if you're not aware of how you're strafing and like how you're tracking the dude with your eyes you're gonna you're gonna struggle heavy and that is one of the things i didn't pay attention about my gameplay i wasn't aware of my strafe in the beginning i would do the quick strafe thinking this would help me avoid bullets and help with the recoil but in reality it was messing my shot by a lot now that i have no aim assist i gotta be more aware of how i'm strafing not only to avoid bullets but to have an easier time tracking the target i'd say in terms of what you actually have to do i'd say mid-range there is a massive skill gap between good and bad controller players because at that mid-range you actually have to uh manage recoil in some aspect and just like track and lead people you can't just like almost afk your stick and let it pull for you however specifically close range it's better for you to almost let it pull for you because you'll overcompensate and not be able to really 
track someone. And I think that is probably where controller is the most consistent. But there are people, especially in the best controller player, like out of the best controller players in the game, who will, it's better to not, almost not do too much and just strafe. Now that I don't have the help of Amosis, I started to pay more attention on how bad my regal control was in mid to long range. Now, if I implement things like regal smoothing, where instead of learning the regal patterns, which it could help, I'll start strafing left and right. And basically all I got to do now is just pull down my stick as I'm tracking the target. What tip would you give to a controller player on how they can use their input to engage in fights more effectively? I would say that if, if you're if you're taking fights and you're dying a lot, more than likely it's not a problem with your gun skill. It's a problem of your positioning and your use of cover. Controller, you should basically be practicing those mechanics. The best way to do that is either hot drop, run around pubs and do that. Like that's the best way to develop your gun skill. And then once you have that gun skill developed, then you got to be taking the approach of, okay, now I need to learn how to approach fights better. The cover that I'm playing, how I'm using that to block out angles, because you're going to be wanting to create as many 1v1s as you can. After hearing what Enoch said, I realized a big flaw that I had with my gameplay. Going back to when I died to the nemesis, I didn't actually die to the nemi. I died because my positioning was terrible. I'm out in the open with no cover whatsoever. From now on, whenever I'm warming up in the range, I'll be more aware of my surroundings and I'll start to practice not only my cover, but my centering to the point where this will become an instinct. So I've seen some controller players who play or have played at a high level do some sort of no aim assist challenge, like solo to master without aim assist and actually succeeding. So with that said, do you think that other good controller players can also succeed playing without aim assist? And I'm talking in like ranked and, and pubs, not, not comp necessarily. I definitely think that the best controller players would still be very good players without it, but it's not deniable that they're not going to be as consistent as they are but i think you 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 would see players doing well compared to the majority of people who play apex you could still be a really really good player it would probably take like a few days you just need to play a decent bit to like just get used to not having it i mean everyone's consistency is going to go down a little bit if you don't have emesis for sure but i don't think all of the higher i guess semi-pro or like rank grinder controller players would be able to do it because a lot of them just play 4-3 when it comes down to it probably wouldn't be able to aim nearly as consistently the no aim assist challenge is good for all the players i think warming up without aim assist is a really not common talked about thing it's it's actually really good recoil control tracking you know all that stuff helps a lot more than what the average roller player thinks i'll be honest talking to these guys was something that i thought i was never going to experience because these were people that i've been following for years and to say that i was inspired was an understatement with motivation being at an all-time high i went back to the range and kept going by day five i was getting more consistent with my tracking on smgs Not only the firing range, I think I'm both sick, I think. but in real games too. My mid to long range ARs were feeling a lot better. And by day six, my wingman, but especially my shotguns, were feeling a lot better too. Well, after running all these drills in the firing range and listening to the pros, not only was I getting more consistent, more motivated, but also a lot more confident. This was the final day, fellas, and here's how it went. Look in my eyes, you see a victory. We ain't taking L's, that's who our enemies. You see the drip on me, you cannot get with me. You cannot stop me. Sit back Shit and watch on. me straight to the top. When we drop, you better join us. Well, we have money in the bank, yo, we ain't playing. You should have listened when we said we stay. We ain't going nowhere. Nah. We ain't got no fear. Nah. Since I can take notes. Cause homie, we did hit. Let's get ready for the run, but no. <laughs> into, into the jungle. It's all around. Ready for war now. Standing on this ground. Holy and shit. Up the crown. Fighting to the end. We stay until we win. Y'all better bring it on. Cause this is our battle. I'm gonna go to the roof.
boy. We ain't got no fear. We ain't got no Hey, listen, I know that seven kills in a 2K isn't that impressive, but getting seven kills in a 2K without aim assist against players that actually shoot back is more impressive than a 20 bomb in a bot lobby. And I'll take that all day, baby. Let's fucking go. Now, the real question is, is there a possibility that Amos is going to get removed from the game? And the answer is absolutely not. It makes zero sense for them to remove something that's going to affect the majority of the player base and the entire casual community on console and PC. A more realistic scenario is if they reduce the value of Amos from 0.4 down to like 0.3 or 0.2. And even then, I doubt that that's going to happen. But who knows? But if a normal player like me could adapt playing without Amos in one week, imagine what a good controller player would do. Think about it. This challenge was by far the hardest thing I had to do. And I'll most definitely warm up without aim assist in the range. Because that helps a lot more than you think. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace!